Schoenberg's Verklärte Nacht, or Transfigured Night, is perhaps one of his best known works. Slightly ironic considering that Schoenberg would become best known for inventing a system of the democratization of pitch known as the 12 tone system. But that wouldn't happen until several years later. This particular work was written in 1899 and it takes its name as well as its form from an expressionist poem by Richard Demo, in which a man and a woman are walking through a moonlit night in a wood and the woman confesses to the man, her lover, that she is carrying the child of another man. And the man very magnanimously says that he will accept this child as his own and that his love will change this child into his own and thus transfigures the night. This is a very lush, late romantic work. And not only is it infused with the passion of the poem, but it is infused with a very personal passion because at the time, Schoenberg was falling deeply for the sister of his teacher, Zemlinsky, Matilda, who he would later go on to marry. It would take two years for the work to have its premiere, and the premiere was a bit of a fiasco. Today, I don't think anyone listening to the piece would understand what all the fuss was about because to our ears it is a lush, beautiful, tonal work. Uh, but at the time, there was one particular chord, not even a chord, but the insinuation of a particular chord that caused great controversy. The implication of an inverted ninth chord, which I think no one today would even pick up on, but which at the time um, audiences would have heard as dissonance. This brings into the question the idea of consonance and dissonance and whether they are fixed ideas. We know that in the Renaissance era, the tritone, the interval of the augmented fourth or diminished fifth, was known as the diabolus in musica, um, the devil in music. And today, we hear the tritone not so much as a dissonant interval, but one of the many different colors that a composer has at his or her disposal. So the idea of consonance or dissonance is fluid. Schoenberg would not compose in this late romantic hypertonal state for long. He would, with his second string quartet, enter into a world without tonality. It's also worth mentioning that Schoenberg saw himself as the next step in the lineage that included Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, and Wagner. This was the logical next step for him and for music.